Hey guys, I'm back. This is part two of the series on upgrading to an ATC or quick change style tool uh, spindle for one of my milling machines. Again, if this works out, I'll probably do it to all of my high speed machines. I've got a lot of the equipment that's necessary to install it sitting here in front of you, but first, I'd like to correct a few things that were wrong or not fully informed from video one, or part one. These two sets of wires here are actually PNP configured sensors that detect the position and uh, condition of the tool change mechanism. They would be an excellent thing to use to stop operation if the tool change mechanism doesn't work if you are running a fully automated tool change configuration. Since I'm just going to use the repe repeatability of tool holders and quick change with this spindle, I won't need to connect these to anything. The two little blue wires here that I commented on in the first video don't go to a switch type thermal protector, they go to a thermistor. So to make use of them, I would probably need to connect them to a PID controller of some type. And then I want to comment on the port here marked air outlet that I couldn't figure out what it was for. As near as I can tell, it's the return side of a dual acting air cylinder inside the spindle that actuates the uh, drawbar. Alright, and I'll show a picture in a minute, but basically, actually you know what, let's cut to the picture right now. Alright, the way I think that spindle operates is it has an air cylinder inside of it and the air cylinder can go in either direction. And the air cylinder may or may not have a spring here that pushes it back. But just to be safe, they use a little bit of air uh, to push it back. Now, the way they do that is what's called a two position. four-way, five-port valve. Now I know I just have some T's drawn up here, but I think they'll make it a little easier to understand what's going on. Alright, you have one port with air going in, like this, alright? And when it's in the normal position, nothing's actuated. This is closed off, and any air, oh, do this again. This is closed off, and air flows through the valve into the bottom of the air cylinder, forcing the piston to be retracted, okay? And any air that's in here will flow like this out through the exhaust port. This is closed off so that any air that's in here can be escaped or be pushed out. When you push the button, flip the switch, actuate the valve, whatever you do to actuate the valve, what happens is the exhaust port up here is blocked off. Air goes through here directly into the air cylinder, into the top of the air cylinder. This is closed off, and air can come out of the lower part of the air cylinder like that, allowing the piston to move down and actuate the mechanism on the top of the drawbar that allows it to retract, or that puts the retraction force on it that holds the tool in. Just for a little bit more information, um, the, on this particular machine, the spindle will be shaped something like this. This is the part in the inside of the spindle that actually turns. Then you have a tapered tool that sockets into that taper. With a little pull stud on top. Alright. Drawbar comes down through the spindle, has a claw on the end. And when the drawbar is drawn up, 
the claw closes in the top, very topmost portion of the taper, or even a slightly different taper, and grabs that pull stud and pulls the tool up into the taper, locking it into the spindle. The way that's done is right here on top of the spindle you'll have a spring of some type, maybe a stack of Belleville washers, maybe a really heavy coil spring. It really depends on how it was engineered. Okay, The drawbar goes through those. On top of the drawbar is your bolt head. If you've ever used a manual machine, I'm sure you've turned a bolt head like that to tighten a tool up into the spindle of your machine. Well, on this, you tighten the uh, drawbar until these springs are partially compressed and the springs are giving enough back force to continue to lock this tool into the spindle taper. All right. Then when you actuate the, uh, the air cylinder, it pushes the piston down, compresses the springs even further, and you can take the tool out. When it releases, it comes back up, the claws grab the pull stud of the tool and pull it back up tight into the taper. That's it. That's how I think it works and that's what I messed up when I was talking about the airlines or the airports on the spindle in video part one. And I don't know why I didn't get that right off the bat. I don't know why I was confused by it. I have another machine right here in the shop that works the exact same way. It looks differently but it's the same basic mechanism. Now back over to the spindle itself. I've got some of the equipment as assembled here or gathered up for installing the spindle in the machine. You notice I have three solenoid valves. This is that two position, four way, five port solenoid valve I was talking about. These are just simple one way solenoid valves and these are some quarter NPT by six millimeter. Well that's just a cap quarter NPT by six millimeter connectors, press fit connectors. I kind of like these because all you have to do is push the tube in, six millimeter tube obviously, and pull back and it's locked in place. If you ever need to remove it, you push in, hold that back, pull it out. Same size connectors as are on the back of the spindle for all of the uh, air fittings that go into the spindle, or all of the air lines that go into the spindle. Push it in, release it. Alright, these are all 12 volt because I already had them. There's a 12 volt DIN rail mounted power supply that I picked up. I actually picked up, I don't know, a half dozen of them at an auction for a few dollars a piece. Otherwise that would be kind of expensive. I already have one of these in another machine controlling, actually I have two of these in machines controlling uh, solenoid valves for air seals. Or not controlling, but powering. Uh, typically on an air seal, I just run a wire straight from the power supply to the solenoid valve so that the solenoid valve is always on whenever the machine is on and it turns off when the machine is off. I went with 12 volt because I already had it. And I suppose at this point I should draw another air diagram of um, how this is all going to be connected. Nah, we'll save that for part three. This video is already over eight minutes long.